Hello everybody and welcome back to Odin's Movie Blog. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope you're doing well. Happy Saturday to everybody. And I have to talk about this film right here, Peppermint, and also why I have this very strong belief that the reason why, the main reason why, Peppermint has a 13% right now, as you can see on Rotten Tomatoes, from the critics, and yet a 78% fresh rating from audiences has to do with politics. Now, of course, we've talked about this constantly, how films today especially seem to have a lot more uh, politics within them. And then when there are films that don't, when there are films that tell a story that don't dive into political discussions, that don't dive into trying to be PC, etc., they usually get eviscerated by liberal critics. Why? Because, again, of those inherent biases. You saw the same thing happen when the movie uh, American Sniper came out. American Sniper was a very, objectively speaking, was a very well-made film, and yet there are so many critics that gave it low ratings. Why? Because they felt, again, in their own opinion, again, letting their biases show through in their reviews, it was like, oh, I don't like how this is glorifying a, a an American Sniper. I don't like how this is glorifying someone who was a violent person, and, oh, it's ignoring some of the things of his past, so, and so I have to take that into account to actually judge the movie itself. I'm sorry, but like when it comes to film criticism, at least from what I traditionally thought it to be, it was mostly about what what is the film, what does it have, what, is it do, what doesn't it have from an objective standpoint. In my view, I always thought that film critics, obviously we're human, so obviously film critics will always have some kind of bias, but I always thought and had hope that most critics would be able to say, I'm able to put those things outside and be able to give things a rating or at least be able to describe, hey, this is a good movie, but it's just not my cup of tea and you won't like it if you are this kind of a person. Instead, they're acting like, oh, this is a bad movie because of my subjective point of view. And that is just not the way to look at movies. Again, there is a subjective position and there's also an objective position. And one of the things that film critics were supposed to do, again, usually they are the ones that went to school and studied film and studied film criticism and studied how to actually view and look at films like I know I did in my undergrad. And yet it seems like most of them are just trying to be essentially pseudo-political writers who happen to be talking about films, and that just pisses me off. But anyway, so Peppermint, 13% on Rotten Tomatoes, and the critics' consensus is far from refreshing. Peppermint wastes strong work from Jennifer Garner on a dreary vigilante revenge story that lacks unique twist or visceral thrills. And I mean, I'm going to tell you right now, like, I give this film a C+. It's not a perfect film by any means, but is it a 13% on Rotten Tomatoes? Should only 13% of critics give it a, a, a fresh rating? No. Absolutely not. The fact that there are movies out there that are actually objective garbage and have higher ratings than this, and yet a film like this will get eviscerated for this reason, I'm sorry, that's pretty much all the evidence I need. And even more so, when you actually look to, it'd be one thing if these were all critics saying, uh, I, I have a problem with the with the editing, I have a problem with, there's definitely a part in the movie that I myself have a very big problem with, and that's the fact that they have this kind of shimmer effect throughout the film, and I thought that it was them trying, the director trying to convey that she's not right in the head, that they're, that she's she's not fully there, that she's going through, that, that the, sh the, sh the, the, the shutter that you're seeing is what's going on in her mind, but then it never addresses that. She's always seen as being totally fine and totally okay, and then I was like, okay, so you're just doing that because you're can do that, and I, I'm not okay with that. So again, there are objective flaws with the film, but to say that this film is bad, objectively, would be one thing. These people go in a very different direction. So let's actually go through some of these amazing reviews. So, <clears throat> from Emily Yoshida of New York Magazine. There was a time when a woman being the star of her own bad action franchise could have been considered the apex of progress, but that time is past. Yes, let us talk about gender once again. So because of gender, she didn't like this movie. Yep, that's what we're dealing with in today's critics. It's so funny how everyone's like, oh my gosh, did you see that the vast majority of critics are male and they're mostly white male and oh my goodness, this is so bad. Well, I'm sorry. If the people writing articles who you think should be allowed to be featured on Rotten Tomatoes, if the diversity that you're thinking of, if those opinions have this in them where it's total subjectivity – shadowing as or pretending to be an objective point of view, an objective position, well then, yeah, you're damn right that they're not going to be noticed. I've always said this before. does not matter who you are, where you come from, uh, what the color of your skin is, what gender you are. You can talk about movies. You can write a blog. You can start and you can, you know, put your things out there. You can, uh, you can try and start writing for a magazine. You can start and try writing for a newspaper. Again, it's going to be competitive because there's a lot of different views out there. But at the end of the day, just because someone is a certain race or is a certain gender does not mean that automatically that now their their opinions and their views matter more. Again, there's an objective reality to films and there's a subjective reality to films and to know the difference between the two is what the job of a critic should be. But of course, we see that that's not the case. Here we go once again from Lindsay Barr. 
Associated Press, once again, a female writer. Peppermint is not is not some model of equality. It's just violent escapism that happens to have a woman in the lead role. Actually, I think the story is pretty good. The story is actually really good because it tells the story of this woman who goes through this very tragic time in her life because she loses her family. Again, I'm not spoiling anything. This is all stuff that's in the trailer. And yet she goes out and does something about it. Again, we've seen this revenge thriller before. We've seen this revenge type of movie before. Yes. And it is not a new concept. However, to try and say, oh, it's just violent escapism and it just, this could have been written for a man. Blah, 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 it's just like, ah, uh, just stop. Why does gender have to be a part of this discussion right now? Jennifer Garner played a badass and she was a badass in the film. Period. And stop. <sighs> Chris from NPR, the title with its slight echo of the 1973 Pam Greer vehicle coffee premises a sticky conf confection of feminism and violence, but the movie is selling its his, his, is selling is a delusory drag. And again, it's drags like that that make me never want to read any reviews again from the NPR from NPR. Oh boy, whatever moments of fun there are watching Garner infallibly tear tear through the ranks of the drug gang are canceled out by the movie's lack of creativity and imagination. From Dana, again, you're seeing a theme here. You're seeing a very constant theme here. And then Barry Hertz really does hit it on the head. It says, a laughably bad melange of blood, guts, and racial stereotypes. And so, of course, he's mad. White man, by the way, is mad because, oh, the cartels, they're all Hispanic. Oh, my goodness. Like, it's such a stereotype. I'm sorry, but when was the last time that you were in L.A.? When was the last time that you were in that area? You do know that gang violence is very prominent there. And unfortunately... Most gangs in those areas tend to be Hispanic. I'm not seeing how that's a racial stereotype. It's mostly just talking about what the reality situation is and playing off that reality. If they had had just a group of white people being a bunch of, uh, <laughs> being a gang in Los Angeles or being a gang in any other, uh, it's just like to me, when people just go so far as to, you know, pontificate and say like, oh, this is racist, this is sexist, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. When the reality just doesn't back up what they have to say, it's that time when you just have to shut up. It's that time when you just have to like go away. You're not helping film criticism. You are making things worse. You're the ones that are making film criticism criticism itself now being taken not very seriously. There are a lot of people going to comment on this video saying, well, I don't read critics anyway. I don't care about Rotten Tomatoes anyway. Well, do you know why that's the case? Because of garbage like this. Because of people trying to bring race and gender into their discussion of a movie. Again, when it's supposed to be an objective take on the film, they bring in their own subjective views, and guess what? That that shouldn't be what film criticism is. It might be. Some might be able to say, oh, you're naive to think this. And again, maybe that's what film criticism is today, but film criticism, as I studied it, as I learned it, was that there are true objective things to look at in film. Again, that's why I love talking to Matthew Kadish because he is just spot on in this. There are objective things to look at in storytelling, in editing, in, in how how the how the shot is framed all these things can be seen from an objective standpoint and then there's there is of course your own subjective viewpoint you have to understand that there's this difference between the two however i will say this is this a good movie no again is this a good movie that you should go out of your way to go see no i was hoping that it would be just so that way i could come back to you guys and say oh man i really want to but guess what that was my subjective position but guess what i went into the film even with that subjective position where i wanted to love this movie and i wanted to be able to praise this movie to the high heavens to be able to fight this garbage but guess what objectively i knew i couldn't do that because it had objective flaws it had objective problems jennifer garner is fantastic gives a brilliant brilliant performance in this movie that all the so many of the supporting characters are fantastic give great supporting uh supporting uh, uh performances of course there are a couple in there that aren't as strong because obviously you're dealing with some pretty decent actors some pretty like like names and faces that i've recognized in several movies before However, even with that being the case, even though there are these editing flaws, as I said before, there's that the whole shimmer thing they try and add into the film. They have these inherent flaws in them. Why isn't that what they're talking about? Why is it that they're getting so caught up? And maybe someone's going to say, well, if you actually read the entire review, they do go into all of those things. Okay, well, why then are you trying to bring in your subjective, again, these top critics, why are you trying to bring in your subjective reality and try and play it off as if it's your own objective opinion of a film? Because it's not. You cannot conflate the two. Because again, objectively, this is a C-plus film. It's okay. It's a fine action film. It's, it's a popcorn film that you can probably have some fun with. Not everyone's going to like it. That's the truth. That's the reality of it. But to try and say this is, this is total hot garbage and this is setting women back and this is setting racial equality back, etc. Et it's like, no, that's not the case at all. 
That that is just you living in la la land, and you living in your own little bubble and thinking to yourself, oh, well, everyone's gonna agree with me. No, it's not the case. Come back to the real world. Film criticism. Come back to the real world, please. And I plan on doing a, a bigger video on this for Geeks and Gamers on, you know, how to read Rotten Tomatoes because they, I think it's something that a lot of people usually get very uh, confused about. But what can we gather from this? We can gather from this that critics don't like it. Why? We just read their reviews because of racism, sexism, and, and gender, and race. Okay, well, now that we know that that's the reason why this got 13%, guess what? That means people like me and people, everyone else that's living in the real world is going to say, okay, well, I don't care about that 13% then. What do I do care about? That 78%. And what does that tell us? It tells us okay it's not a great movie but it's not a bad movie it's a movie that I could probably have fun with at 78% and again if that number fluctuates much I don't can't see it really dropping below 70% but at the end of the day it's an okay film so if that's if that's something that you want to see if you want to see Jennifer Garner kick some ass in a movie and see violence then go and check out this film. If not, then hey, this isn't the movie for you, and it's just not the movie for everybody. But anyway, guys, I just had to get my thoughts on this because when I saw this 13% score, I was like, it cannot be that bad. And guess what? It wasn't that bad. And the fact that when you actually dive into what the critics are saying, that you end up seeing, oh, wait a minute, there is actual... Because again, I said this constantly before. When you are the one that's constantly talking about race and sex, uh, like racism and sexism and all these other things, more often than not, you're probably more racist and sexist yourself since you care so much more about those issues. Again, when I see a movie, when I saw Peppermint, I saw a badass character. That's what I saw. I wasn't saying, oh man, I'll... Oh. <laughs> Well, well, Steve, you know what? I cannot wait to see this this woman on screen kick men's butts. That's what I came to see in this movie. Or, oh, I just, oh, you know what? You know what, Sharon? I just wanted to see, I wanted to see a nuanced performance. And I wanted to see a nuanced, I wanted to see a nuanced script here, you know? That's what I, that's what I wanted to see. I'm sorry. If you're one of those people, you're part of the problem. Anyway, guys, thank you all so much for watching. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up. Hit that subscribe. It really does help me out a lot. You guys are all amazing. You can check out for my video tomorrow from Geeks and Gamers. I'm going to look into the box office numbers, but I have a feeling that I'm probably going to try and do this Rotten Tomatoes, how to read Rotten Tomatoes video instead because it's a video that I've wanted to do for a very long time and I just know that more people are going to be able to see it on that channel instead. So anyway, guys, thank you all so much for watching. Have a great day and as always, God bless.